Expressive Chords is a relatively new free download, like a free extra to Ableton 12. And while this is a really amazing device on its own, I think music producers may be completely unaware of some of the things that come with this free download device. It is so easy to build incredible chord rack devices. And if you happen to enjoy that classic house music style of, you know, chord re-triggering kind of sound, this video might be a game changer for you. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so what I want you to do is first just go and download the Expressive Chords Pack uh, in Ableton. So this is an extra thing that you download for free, and it's a really, really powerful thing to add to Ableton and get a lot of things out of. And when you do that and you open it up, you'll see this screen on the right hand side. When you go to packs, you'll see expressive chords and you'll see the device. Now the device is really cool, but this video isn't even about the device. It's about this folder underneath the MIDI files. And I'm a big believer in using MIDI files, almost like sampling, where it gives you a head start on something and just gets the inspiration flowing so fast. And this is a fantastic uh, little extra MIDI folder they give you. And this is a really cool trick. So I'm going to take, let's just say the first one, 90s R&B, drag and drop it in. Now what you'll notice about this MIDI clip is that it doesn't have any like stylistic things to it. Like there's no velocity. It's just chords that are stacked up. In fact, let's go ahead and grab a little piano sound to get us started. Yeah, and so I like to call these things like a chord map because it's just raw chord MIDI material. And uh, for some of you that are already subscribed to the channel, you probably already know like I'm big on just coming up with cool tricks to just give yourself inspiration. So once I saw this, I was like, oh, it's on. It's so cool because uh, there's a lot of things you can do with this. Like the new shortcut in Ableton is Control B which if I hit that, I think it's Command B on Mac if you got a Mac computer. And it's gonna bounce that arrangement to a new audio track. So everything that we just heard that was in MIDI has now become audio, just like that. And this is kind of cool. Now it doesn't, it, you know, it might not sound very musical because it's just rapid fire, uh, just, you know, smashing you with chords. But then you can right click and you can go to Slice to New MIDI Track. And this is really amazing too, because when you hit this, we can slice it based on quarter notes. So everything's set up. So it's like an even trigger. This can be difficult with like raw audio material sometimes. You know, there's different workarounds I've done in previous videos, but hit that, you could do a slicing preset. Um, these are all interesting as well. I'll just keep it on default for this video, whatever. And it's gonna take that and just drop it into slices. Now it's going to have sort of a shortness to it. So what I like to do is turn up decay and release. So if you're not familiar with ADSR or envelopes, that's just going to make it so that when I hit that button, it has a more natural decay to it, even if I really just quickly tap it like that. Now I've got my MIDI keyboard. You might have a MIDI device or an Ableton push. And basically you can just find a couple notes like on your MIDI device. And if you think about it, it's kind of like instant house, <laughs> right? So if I want to double down on this, it just matters what instruments you're using to bounce from that MIDI. So here I've got my own Korg M1 kind of preset that I use on my own productions. And so you'll notice it has sort of a harder sound. Kind of overwhelming because it's just all those chords, you know, in a row. But same thing, just control B, bounce this out to some audio, right click. Slice a new MIDI track, quarter notes, because that's how it's set up. And boom, now we can actually trigger something with those M1 kind of sounds. And maybe we can dirty this sound up with some effects. videos, I've 
is I like to have like cool habits with how I switch things up. Like let's say I'm in a state where I have a loop going. I've got some elements working together, right? Some of the chords, the drums, and the bass. And I want to test it out in different ways. I want to build on that arrangement. So what I'll do is I'll hit Control D for duplicate. And make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you can kind of get into the habit of these ideas because some of these things I've talked about in previous videos, but I know that like 95% of people that watch my videos are not subscribed. So they're probably hearing from me for the first time. And uh, just make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss my videos. They come out like every few days. And what I'll do is I'll hit shift tab. Okay, I'm looking at, you know, my MIDI, right? So I'm going to hit control A. I'm just going to select everything. And you can see right here, you have transform. So you have this recombine feature. And this thing is great because when you have syncopated MIDI like this and you just hit transform, it'll shuffle it around within that meter or within that clip, I should say. And um, if you have something that's syncopated, it just immediately shuffles it out and you can get a different feel. So you're like immediately testing new um, iterations of the arrangement, I guess you could call it. And because we're looping, we can kind of test it on the fly. Just hit it, transform it. And of course, from there, you can go ahead and move things around and click and add things and be creative, you know. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And maybe you get to this place where you have like a new iteration of the idea. Another neat trick that I've covered before, I could chop this up by, I guess this is two measures. And so I have these different little segments. I'm kind of being granular here. If I right click, I go to consolidate time to new scene. It's going to bounce that out into the live screen. So you can trigger this stuff intuitively. It can happen pretty quick too. You can just go over here, consolidate time to new scene. And now you're kind of building out these iterations of, you know, a MIDI idea like this to this screen. And you can start triggering things intuitively, start arranging. In some ways you could argue that I feel like Ableton was designed to be like this, where you create an idea, you reiterate, and then you start to arrange. So yeah, you could use it that way. It's a really neat feature as well. And uh, it's pretty seamless too when you kind of get into that workflow, you know. So yeah, those MIDI extras are really useful and you can do this with all kinds of resources and it doesn't have to be a drum and bass or house. I'm just messing around with different genres here. But yeah, if you found this video useful, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the like button and all that stuff. Uh, you would not believe how much it supports the channel. It really does. 95% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed. So it doesn't cost you anything at all. And it really does support the channel with the algorithm and all that stuff. And if you want to, you know, up your vocal production skills or get my Ableton power tools every week or promote your music or just watch my videos ad free, there's a link down below to my Patreon. It's a great place to be. And yeah, I'll see you all later. Have fun making music.